You may think that changing out shocks is a very simple, easy upgrade, and for the most part that's true, but we have seen over the years quite a few different ways to mess that simple, easy upgrade up. So today, we're going to be talking about what those possible mistakes are to help you avoid them. Tech Time Tuesday. First up, we're going to talk about bolts. So the bolts that hold the shocks on at Motorhome fairly often are a three-quarter inch bolt, uh, inch and an eighth head. So these are all different examples of that. So here we've got two examples of coarse thread and one example of fine thread. So you can see the number of threads is much greater on the fine thread compared to the coarse thread. Most motorhomes use a coarse thread bolt. And even in those cases, if the bolt's been on there for a while, the shock's been on there for a while, and you get any rust buildup, that can make removal difficult. So you can see how the threads have been kind of boogered up uh, by removing that bolt. And generally, we're using self-locking nuts in that case as well. So those, those nuts, they, they really don't want to come off. So any debris, any rust in there, that's really going to start to chew up that bolt. So as it is with coarse thread, that's enough of, of a potential problem. But if it's a fine thread, specifically, we see that done on like the, uh, the Workhorse W Series chassis that can really make it difficult to get those shocks off. So again, this is an example of fine thread. Uh, in a case like that, and really the same with the coarse thread, either way, uh, we really recommend using a penetrating lubricant like PB Blaster. Spray them down really well. Let it set for a while before you try to remove them. Uh, use an impact wrench. But uh, you really got to watch out, again, especially for those fine thread bolts where I, I myself replaced the shocks on a W series. And I thought I was going to have to cut that bolt off because it just started hanging up. I had to use a three quarter inch drive impact wrench to slowly hammer the thing off and get it loose. So that's your first tech tip. Just to get the shocks off, make sure that you're soaking them down, you go slow. If it starts to bind up, you might try hammering it for a little bit and then backing it off. But be prepared, especially if those fasteners are rusty, to maybe replace that hardware with new stuff. Uh, we recommend always using grade 8. And uh, you can tell grade 8 by the six lines around the, the head of the bolt. A, uh, a lesser grade will have fewer lines uh, around the head there, but uh, good idea to go with, uh, with the best grade of hardware. So that's our first tip. Second tip, if you're dealing with a case where you've got a stud and not a, uh, a separate bolt, then you really got to be careful. So this is actually a, uh, a stud that we would replace the factory unit with. It actually has to get welded onto the chassis for the uh, Monaco Roadmaster 8-bag and 10-bag chassis. So the shock itself would slide onto this larger diameter portion and then your nut would thread on there. So you really want to be careful in removing these, making sure, again, you soak them down good because this is a fine thread. Uh, but also, when you tighten that back down, really be careful. We recommend not using an impact wrench. Go slow, make sure that it's torqued properly, but... With a stud like this, if you over torque that and snap that off, then you've got to cut it off and you got to replace it with something like this that has to be welded back on. So that's our, our second tip. Be very careful if you're dealing with a stud. Another, another chassis that is an example of this is the Ford E450, E350 chassis. On the front, the lower shock mount uses a stud. And I myself in my younger days way over torqued one and uh, snapped that stud right off. And uh, then you had to, had to cut it off. The guys had to come help me out, cut it off, and then weld a new stud on. So be careful in that case. Before I go on, I'm going to stop and ask you to like and subscribe to this video. We put a lot of work into these videos, and we really strive to provide value to you, to teach you about different aspects of motorhome steering and suspension. So we don't want you to miss out. So make sure like and subscribe so you can always stay connected with what we're putting out there. The third tip is more so just related to general misunderstandings of different types of shocks. So talking about shock absorbers, there's really two, broadly speaking, different categories. One is a monotube and the other is a twin tube. So the most common example of a monotube shock absorber is Bilstein. And we see this uh, from the factory on some coaches. It's also a, a common aftermarket upgrade. They are good shocks. Uh, we do prefer the Coney's for their balance of ride quality and handling, which I'll get to in a few moments. But what you'll notice about a monotube shock, uh, first, 
to help avoid personal injury due to explosion, do not apply heat or fire. They're, they're basically warning you oil and gas under high pressure. So a monotube shock has a nitrogen charge in it. And that's what makes this thing want to expand back out. So this thing is pretty stout and you'll see it now. Got myself nice and dirty there. So that'll, that'll expand back out on its own. Monotube shocks do that. That's just the way they work. Um, a twin tube shock, on the other hand, does not do that because a twin tube, it, it uses, instead of having just one single tube with a gas charge in the bottom to keep the piston in, in contact with the fluid, a twin tube has an inner cylinder and then an outer uh, cylinder, an outer reservoir for the fluid as well. So it's actually relying not on gas pressure, but relying on gravity to keep that that fluid in contact with the piston. And first, you'll notice this being a twin tube. I can collapse it, let go. It does not expand on its own. Now this is an OE shock. Uh, I believe it's an original Ford shock. Um, yep, got the Ford logo on there. So we removed that from a Ford F53. Not a bad shock, but we've removed it and put a, a better Coney on there. Now we've got some Coney FSD shocks as an example as well. You'll see, same story here. I can compress this. It does not expand on its own. That does not indicate there is any problem with the shock. Coney motorhome shocks are twin tube. They do not expand on their own. That's just the way they work. And uh, now you'll hear, oh, monotube is better. Uh, twin tube is not as good. In certain applications, that is true. Monotubes are nice for uh, heat dissipation. Nice for keeping that piston completely in contact with the fluid when you've got a lot of travel, a lot of movement happening in that shock. Like in off-road applications, monotubes are great. Uh, for a motorhome application, you really don't have as much travel in the suspension as you do in an off-road application. And some of that initial softness in the response can actually be beneficial in a motorhome application where with the Coney's, we're not trying to be as strong in compression. We're actually trying to be a little more compliant in compression and then control the rebound movement after the fact. So you can see that again, this thing is pretty, pretty stiff to extend, very strong in rebound, but in compression, it's not as not as stiff. That's just the way Coney's are designed. Again, that's why we like them because they provide the the best balance of ride quality and handling that we've seen in a motorhome shock absorber. Now, again, going back to that difference between a monotube and a twin tube, because a monotube has that gas charge always keeping the oil in contact with the piston, it actually doesn't matter if I install it upside down or right side up. There are certain Bilsteins where just by design, they've got the reservoir on top and it will function in either direction. So there's no, there's nothing on this telling me, you know, this way up, it only works that way. With a twin tube, however, that's not the case because like I said, we're relying on gravity to keep that fluid in contact with the piston. It can only be installed one way and that is with the reservoir of the shock on the bottom. You'll see there, says top and an arrow pointing up. So that means that way to the top of the shock. So this is our, just our dust cover, just a metal shield. Now, not all conies have that. Some of them have a plastic dust cover. Some don't have any dust cover just for clearance purposes. And that's okay. Coney uses good quality seals where it's not really required. But again, either way, you're gonna have that main body of the shock at the bottom because that's where all your fluid is. And then just the shaft of the shock with or without the dust cover on top will be toward the top of the shock. So we have seen these installed upside down. They don't work so good. And uh, we have also seen people say, oh, I, I think the shock is bad. It's not expanding on its own. No, that's not the case if it's a Coney. So we wanna correct those, uh, those misconceptions as well. So to recap, Use a penetrating lubricant, especially if you're dealing with fine thread, but really in either case, if you've got old rusty fasteners, be very careful if you are mounting your shocks with a stud that's attached to the chassis rather than a separate bolt. And then just be aware of what type of shock you're installing. Again, we recommend the Coney's. Make sure in that case that they're installed right side up. And uh, just know that by their design, they're not gonna expand on their own the way that a monotube would. So we hope that information was helpful for you. 
We really uh, encourage you to like and subscribe. Uh, be ready for our next tech tip where we'll continue to cover a variety of topics, either chassis specific or just related to different aspects of motorhome steering and suspension. Thank you very much. Until next time, want to wish you safer and happier driving. Tech Time Tuesday.